It's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. Today, I'm going to be having a look at the Hako FX888D soldering station. Now, this is on loan to me, courtesy of what seems to be my uh, very generous content producer, uh, Mitenale, who actually purchased one of these for his own use. And he's been very kind to offer me to have a look at it and check it out because I had thought about getting one, but I didn't get one. And my standard soldering iron now is actually the TS100. So it's good to be able to check this out finally in person because almost every other sort of big keyboard person uses one of these or probably a TS100. Of course, there are people who use like Yihuas and, and Groots and other things as well, but this is probably the most recommended soldering iron out there to date within the community because it's just got some really great features about it. So we're going to check it out. Uh, now this, I believe, should be a legitimate one because it was bought locally from, I think, uh, I'm, going to, I'm just going to say Mechtronics because I think that's the Australian distributor for it. So there it is, the blue and yellow edition. A silver edition exists, does it? Cool. <laughs> and there's a, uh, a little barcode in here. It's a big hefty box. So let's check it out. Right, so we've got some, uh, some part instructions. There's a... Uh, bit of cardboard material to protect it and straight off in the box you know what I'm just gonna uh, declamp some stuff here there we go that should help get things out of the way clunk I do apologize for the slight delay uh, I take what opportunity I can and I often shoot multiple videos when I can when uh, people are out of the unit so there is what it looks like after you take it out so we've got the actual iron itself and the stand and the base unit so let's uh, take it out now Mitenale has already used this by the looks of it unless if he got it used which would be no problem with it whatsoever anyway and there is a alternate tip so that I believe looks like it's a chisel uh, yeah it's a small it's a chisel chisel tip so we'll just put that back in for the moment and let's have a look Ooh, okay right just feed that in. Base station, very solid feel. And there is the main unit. Now, <clears throat> the things to check out to see if it's a legit one or not. Um, I'm not actually going to open this up because supposedly one of the best ways to, to find out if you have a legit one or not is to actually open it up. Uh, but I don't really need to do that so it looks pretty good the feet are on the screws don't protrude it's got the right sort of power attachment the actual LCD display doesn't have the obvious thick LCD separations on it the grip itself is at the correct position the cable is very flexible as it should be and the handle is matte electrostatic safe whereas the clones typically do not have a matte version they've got a, a shiny glossy version of it the actual inserts have the gray silicon bits within the holder so it seems to be ticking off everything to definitely be a legitimate hako now I'm going to plug this in. There we go. Okay. And then let's turn it on. 
350. It's, uh, it's giving me an error because obviously the actual iron is not plugged in. So let's just turn that off. Okay, we have some specifications. Packing materials, initial setup, connecting it. Up to select and change settings. Pressing this will change the selected preset. Pressing holding it will start the adjustment mode. Use this button to make and confirm selections. Pressing and holding the button will set the temperature mode. Wow, this I won't say it's super complex, but um, right. Okay, so essentially, if I read this correctly, the actual numbers will cycle upwards only and back around to zero and then you hit the enter button to actually set the temperature which is cool and it's got a number of preset temperatures 250, 300, 350, 400, 450 so that's pretty cool uh, there's some operational details in here for adjusting then you've got some details on cleaning your tips as well as a variety of the tip styles down here. So that's that's nice. So I don't have any solder at the moment with me, but I'm just gonna plug that in the right way. There we go. And then let's just turn that on again. And now it should not give me the error. And look at that, it's ramping up. Can I feel the heat coming off it? Oh yeah. Can feel the heat coming off the tip now. It's quick. But then again, it's got a dedicated massive bulk here to, to do that job. Yeah, the heat's definitely coming off that now. <laughs> um, Oh, I can, I can really smell it. Now, I'm gonna say maternally, you've done a relatively poorish job of looking after your tip. Um, <laughs> I am gonna be back with some solder. So I have all my stuff in a box so it's easy to move around in and out of uh, this space so that my daughter doesn't get into things and get herself into trouble. Uh, and as you can tell, I've actually got this mat down, so if I get splutter on it, oh well. So it should be at 350 now, yeah, so it's reading 350 and the solder is hot. There we go. So I'm just going to re, uh, it's just melting it very well. I normally run 350 for desoldering. I don't run 350 for soldering when I work with leaded because that's what I use. I use leaded solder. Uh, and yeah, you had all this black stuff on it, mate. Got to, uh, it's probably like rosin from rosin core, but I just want to, just want to clean that out for you and then then we'll actually uh, clean and prep that so we see that it's working pretty well um, so I'm gonna turn that off and while it's hot now I'm just gonna flow on a generous amount So that it actually coats the tip and it forms like a ball and that way it will actually protect the tip of your iron now I've just lost that one it just dropped off but 
it shows that this is actually holding heat very, very well. Uh, the TS100, the actual heater core is much, much smaller than this. So I would expect that this will take a little bit longer to actually cool down to a temperature that the solder will set at without falling off and wobbling or going. It's, it's still liquid right now as I'm moving it around. So I've got to be careful about holding this. I do apologize if I was very quiet just then because obviously the angle and distance that I'm at, plus of course background traffic um, noises. So it's is it still liquid? It's still liquid. Wow. So this, this thing stays hot heaps long. Heaps long. Is it actually still hot? It's still hot enough to melt solder. Look at that. It's still melting the solder. Touching it. So the Harco definitely has a lot better heat retainment than the TS100 because I can tell you I wouldn't be able to do that with the TS100. Now that I'm holding it, it's actually quite comfortable. Uh, the cable doesn't really feel like it's getting in the weight, but it is actually... I wouldn't say it's too short, but for my desk setup, I would find it probably a little bit annoying because that unit's probably going to sit on the table on this side because I don't want the power cord across the table because it pulls up onto the table. Then this is going to have to be also on the table. Whereas with my TS100, because it has a power pack that I've got over this side hanging vertically, I can actually make it hang. My power cable runs underneath my feet and it comes up and over. And so I can get a much better setup compared to having the Hako. It takes a big footprint. Um, that Okay, so that's cooled off enough now that the blob is, is staying there. So now as you can see, maybe, there's there's a big fat ball on the end there, okay? That will protect the, uh, the tip of the iron until you come to use it next time. Now, uh, what was I saying? Yes, the footprint is, is big. It's big, it's heavy. So if you've got a small limited desk space like mine, it's a great iron, but it, you are sacrificing space. It's, I mean, it's practically the same size as my spool. Now, in terms of the actual other bit, it's comparable. So there's the Yihua, the Yihua one, and there's the uh, there's the 100 that I use. So it's a very similar size. So you're not really gaining or losing much in that as well. Now, if we compare the actual size of the uh, the the heating capability there you can see it's a massive difference absolutely massive difference and that's why it manages to retain that heat and that's actually really great for continuous soldering because you don't have to stop and let that that tip come up to temperature because it's just pumping out all that heat and especially if you're desoldering like at 350 which is what I think Mitenole has been doing uh, it means you can desolder a lot more a lot faster without having to wait for it to heat up. Now, noting that the chisel tip is also here, that means it really has the capability of just pumping out all of that heat so you can desolder very, very quickly. Whereas with, with the TS100, it'll do it, but you may have to wait you know, every couple of switches for it to come back out uh, and come to temperature before you go again. So there you have it. Very, very quick look. Uh, I do wonder what it looks like in silver though, because I've only ever seen these in blue and yellow. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. Cable's, cable's nice and flexy. It's decent length, but it's just about, it's gonna hang off the table in front of me, because if you've ever seen any of my soldering videos, you know, I'm right-handed, so the soldering iron's gonna be on the right-hand side of my desk, and the cable is just gonna be dangling off in front of me, which is, which is not ideal, which is not ideal for me at all. But if I had a dedicated workshop and a much bigger space bench where I could put the actual base unit on my right hand side and it could be power supplied that way and it wouldn't be an issue, then that would be perfectly fine. And you could probably get like a, a cable bungee, like a mouse 
cable bungee and suspend that so it's actually up and then that way it's also not going to get in the way but obviously right now in my current setup I do not have that so there you have it there is the Hako uh, FX 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 888D FX 888D it's a pretty pretty good iron just from very quick look and use of it everybody loves it the grip is comfortable though this gray bit here I was actually expecting that to be soft so picking that up and it doesn't really have much sort of padding to it like it does flex but not as much as I thought it would it's comfortable in the hand but it, I'm so used to using this this being so small and actually using it like a pencil this is like holding a whiteboard marker it's, it's just a very different grip size to have to deal with when when working not that I wouldn't be able to but I'm very used to having it now holding it at pen size as opposed to marker size so I mean look I can put that underneath that and the profile of it completely obscures it whereas if you sit that on top you can just see like the massive girth by comparison right there we have it thanks again Mitemile for lending that to me to check out and I'll be in touch with you very shortly to find out what keyboard that you want me to build and I'll give it a go using this and we'll see how it runs out so uh, if you have never come across our stuff before and you somehow found this video uh, and you're interested in mechanical keyboards which is what my channel is primarily about our channel is primarily about then please head over and check out our podcast weekly as well you can get in contact with us via reddit patreon facebook youtube you can ask us for an invite to slack as well and uh yeah get involved with the keyboard community so thanks very much for checking out the video and of course as usual until next time happy clacking